will. Thus, this is what makes them idolaters. Also, the Meiri states, in the name of Rav Yosef Megash, Muslims continue in their practice of Islamic pagans. Folks, it just gets more exciting. Asher is talking about the Meiri of all people. Asher has the Meiri state, in the name of Yosef bin Hagash, that Muslims continue in practices of idolatry. If you're a rabbi, or at least a well-read Jew, and happen to be watching this, you'll see why this is so exciting. Permit me to digress to explain why Asher's use of the Meiri is problematic. Menachem Meiri is a rather interesting rabbi from 14th century France. The Meiri championed tolerance in applying Jewish law to the world by reconsidering the status of Gentiles, particularly Christians and Muslims. The Talmud is filled with references to Gentiles that place them in a not-so-good light. Nachem Meiri tried to bridge the gap between the Jew and the Gentile by arguing that one must distinguish between an idol-worshipping Gentile and a Gentile which he termed bound by religion, or in other words, a Muslim or Christian. Here is the Meiri being quoted by Ashameza again. Someone uninformed about the Meiri would think that the 14th century rabbi was saying that Muslims were idolaters because the Spanish Jews said so. The Meiri, in fact, believed Christians as well as Muslims were monotheists, and hence that many of the restrictions of the Talmud would not apply to them. Let's see what scholarship has to say on this issue. Here is a footnote from a book of responsa from the Reform Rabbis. I quote it here for its scholarship value. Note that Meiri excludes Christians and Muslims from the category of idolatry in his commentary on the Talmud, Beit HaBechira. Alan Brill states in his book, Judaism and World Religions, that the Meiri holds that Muslims are bound by the way of religion and law, that tot va nim suim. Alan Brill is a professor at Satin Hall University. He is also an Orthodox rabbi. Here is a well-known Orthodox rabbi, Rabbi Irving Greenberg. He quotes the Mary in his book, saying, Christians, Christianity and Islam are deemed to be practiced by people whose ethics and inner morality have been shaped by the process of becoming civilized by religion. Now, let's get back to that quote where Mary is quoting Spanish authorities. Is there any evidence that Mary classified Islam as Avodazara? Does Asher know something to discredit our Orthodox scholars quoted earlier? I consulted a rabbi with knowledge about the Mary. I asked him about Mary's references to Spanish authorities and if that indicated Mary believed Muslims were guilty of Avodazara because the Spaniards said so. The rabbi stated that the Mary did not believe Muslims were guilty of Avodazara. Mary was simply following protocol by quoting his predecessors. All rabbis do this in their responsa. They don't necessarily agree with them by simply quoting them. There is no lack of scholarship on the Mary. We can see that it's crystal clear that Mary held Muslims to be complete monotheists. Does Asher know something we don't know? Probably not. This is another statement Meza writes on the video which has Mary forbid the benefits of wine handled by Muslims. We will get to Rabbi Sulfur and Sefer Eshkol shortly. Why is Asher stating Mary and these others in the same statement? The reason why Asher quotes the two rabbis in Eshkol in the same sentence is because Asher is not getting information from primary sources. He is in fact quoting the Wikipedia website, WikiNoah. Why would a rabbi with presumed rabbinical training quote a wiki site as a source of information? Of course, Asher doesn't want us to know this, but a simple Google search with the video quotation reveals the source. Notice footnote 3 from the WikiNoah website. Remember the first statement Mary made earlier, quoted by Asher, where he said, Mary said in the name of Ibn Hagash. Asher didn't consult any rabbinical sources. He just took it from the WikiNoah website. And this quote that Asher displays in the window? 
Osher simply cut and pasted it from the WikiNOA website. An average Jew or Gentile may know about the Rambam and maybe one or two other rabbis, but any well-read Jew and any rabbi worth his name will know who Menachem Meiri is. I would expect a yeshiva student to know this just as much as I would expect a mediocre high school student to know who Abraham Lincoln is. I simply wonder if Ashimeza even know, knows who the Meiri is. I would expect anyone quoting the Meiri or any of the sources used in this video to have the frame of references to discuss the issues properly. If you recall earlier, Asher puts a quote up from Rav Nachshon Gaon, one of the Babylonian Talmud Academy leaders. Well, that quote attributed to Rav Nachshon comes from the Sefer Ha'eshkol. Sefer Ha'eshkol was believed to have been written in the 12th century by Abraham Isaac, a French rabbi, even though the book did not appear in history until the 19th century. A rabbinical scholar, Shalom Albeck, proved the book was a forgery. This is because the book makes references to legal arguments known to have taken place in the 16th and 17th centuries, hundreds of years after Rabbi Abraham ben Isaac died. No scholar today believes the book is authentic, save some rabbis in the ultra-Orthodox community. Well, regarding this sugya that we just read, the Ran states that Islam here qualifies as fitting this mold of idolatry. He says that the leader of the Muslims, even though the people do not consider him a god, that they nevertheless bow and acknowledge that they are human incarnations of his divine will, that their halakhic status is that of idolaters or of avodah. Now we have Rabbi Nisim Garona, known as the Ran another medieval Spanish rabbi. Today, this quotation attributed to the Rand can be found in a modern work of Jewish jurisprudence called the Sitz Eliezer. Usher makes a reference to this work later in the video. The Sitz Eliezer used this to make an argument that entering a mosque is Avodah Zara for Jews. There are many problems with this text as there are with everything else Usher uses. The first is so obvious. The quotation claims that Muslims bow to Muhammad, the prophet of Islam. Muslims do not bow to Muhammad though. It needs to be asked again, why would you quote someone who has inaccurate knowledge of the subject matter? It should also be noted that Asher doesn't post a full quotation which also refers to Christians as idolaters. This particular quote attributed to the Ran did cause some controversy because it clearly contradicted Rambam's opinion that Islam was monotheistic, an opinion widespread by that time period. In fact, Rabbi Chaim Benveniste, another rabbi, Meza quotes, referred to this opinion of the Ran as a great novelty. But wait, there's more. The second problem is that this text is not regarded as authentic by modern scholars. See the works of Mark Shapiro and Alan Brill, both Orthodox rabbis and both academics. When rabbis write their opinion on a subject, they quote their predecessors' views. See the section of my video on Rabbi Menachem Meiri, for example. The quotation of the Ran here does not quote any of his predecessors. However, we have an authentic response to a collection from the Ran where he quotes his predecessors. Here is an authentic quote from the Rand that Asher Meza does not want to use here for some strange reason. Because the Geonim agreed that the wine of Ishmaelites is not forbidden for benefit, but only for drinking, as wrote Maimonides, that they are not considered idol worshippers, and there isn't any concern that it was an idolatry usage, therefore was forbidden only because of preventing assimilation. Christians.
Now, there is a form of Islam that everyone agrees is Abu Dazara, and that is Sufism, the belief system of the Sufis, which is a mystical form of Islam. And about these, the Rambam's son directly calls it idolatry. We even have Rabbi Yosef Karo calling it idolatry. So um, took in his writings, and this is like really bizarre stuff. This is where it starts to go off the rails for me. I was amazed to read these things. Abraham apparently was deeply influenced by an Islamic movement called Sufism, and he was unapologetic about it. Now, what exactly? Sufism is Avodah Zarah, according to Abraham Maimonides. It is a shame that Orthodox Jews study the Rambam's son and still have a poor frame of reference. Any and every academic who ever wrote about Abraham Maimonides wrote about his strong affinity to Sufism, in fact. This is common knowledge, and I would be embarrassed if I was a rabbi and did not know this. Do a simple Google search on Abraham Maimonides and see what comes up. The son of the Rambam was forced to defend his use of Sufi concepts and rituals as a matter of fact. This is exciting history.